Welcome back there, children. It's 8.07 p.m. and it's time to record the lecture for the next unit because I didn't do it yet. Uh, we are starting the new unit on chemical changes, a.k.a. chemical reactions. And for those of you following along in the notes, we're about to kick it off. But before we can talk about the chemical formulae like you have at the top of your notes, we're going to have to do a little bit of review. So remember, atoms are the basic unit of all matter. They're composed out of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Usually, these atoms are going to be neutral, right? Because you should have the same number of protons as you do electrons. Very important there to have a neutral atom. Unless you have an ion, and then obviously you will have a charge. If it's an ion, it means you have a different number of protons and electrons. Keep in mind the neutrons being neutral do not affect the charge. Uh, these atoms can combine in specific ways based on their valence electrons. We learned about that last unit that was talking about the bonds. So if you're going to form or rearrange the combinations, you're going to form or rearrange the bonds, that would require a chemical reaction. So anytime you have a chemical reaction, that means we're changing, we're rearranging, or we're forming bonds that weren't already there. Usually it's breaking some bonds and making some bonds. Breaking and making of the bonds, we call that a chemical reaction. I know you're just dying to fill out these notes, but hold on, there's a few more things you need to keep track of. Now, you may have to come back to this part of the notes to help you fill in the table on your notes, but uh, keep in mind, we've got three main terms that we need to discuss here. There's an element, which is any single atom composed of just one substance. It cannot be separated by what we call ordinary means. Remember in the first set of notes, you talked about like cutting things or breaking them or maybe even setting them on fire. Those would all be ordinary means. They're not gonna break an element down any smaller. We also have molecules, which is anytime you have two or more atoms bonded together. You made some Lewis dot uh, structures, some Lewis dot diagrams showing two or more atoms bonded together. You didn't maybe know it at the time, but you are making molecules. You made like a, like a nitrogen molecule, N2, stuff like that. Uh, for example, it could also have an oxygen molecule, which is super important. Those are the things that we uh, breathe. You also made an oxygen molecule. You also made a water molecule. Anytime you have any two or more atoms bonded together, like the three atoms, the two hydrogen, the one oxygen, the make of the water, yeah, you'll have a water molecule. Now, we could call these molecules a compound if and only if we have two or more different elements. For example, the oxygen molecule here, that would not be a compound, just a regular molecule because it's made out of oxygen and more oxygen. However, a water molecule has one hydrogen and two oxygens. So now we have two or more different elements. So the water molecule would also be a compound. Water is also a compound. Anytime you have any substance, any mixture made of two or more different elements, we call that a compound. So water is a compound. That's fun. Now, we're finally ready to fill in the notes. You got the top of your notes, chemical formulae, and that says AKA chemical formulas. Make sure you get that Boop, in the notes right there. We're gonna use the same symbol that we use from the periodic table, and when we use the symbol, we need to be drawing it the proper way. Not the way it's shown on the periodic table, but the proper way. So as a quick refresher, remember, the mass is gonna go up here in the top left corner. The atomic number that tells us the number of protons goes here in the bottom left corner. Now, when we're writing chemical formulae, that's the plural of chemical formula, by the way, when we're writing different chemical formulae, we usually leave these two out. Unless you have a special isotope, then you may include the mass, but if you're using the normal mass, we're gonna leave that out. We almost never put the atomic number because uh, the name also gives you the atomic number. Helium will always have atomic number two forever and ever. That's how we know it's helium. If you have a charge of, if your reaction involves an ion, then yeah, we'll use that here. And then down here in the subscript area, see my sweet subscript? If you have a molecule or a compound, you're gonna have something there in the subscript area, like you just saw with uh, H2O, or if we wanted to make uh, my friend and yours the oxygen molecule. So H2O would look like this. Notice we're using the subscript there. That's, hydrogen, that's a hydrogen molecule, not a compound. But if we were to add oxygen there, now we have a water molecule, which is also a compound. Again, we have two hydrogens. Whenever it's one, you don't need to draw the one, you just leave that out. So, so far, should be feeling 
for it to get. Do us a favor, if you haven't already labeled uh, your symbol, make sure you do that. And make sure, again, that you label the subscript as telling you how many of each atom are found around the molecule. Your notes should look kind of like these. So we're going to use that same symbol from the periodic table. We're going to have a specific symbol for every single compound that we're going to use. Uh, those symbols cannot be altered. If you've got, uh, for example, an H2, you're going to leave that H2. You're not going to alter that. So if you haven't already filled in the sentence below, uh, here, I'll read it to you. Using the symbols from the periodic table, the subscript to say how many of each atom are bonded together in a molecule. There. If you need to hear it again, go ahead and rewind it. But there's your blank right under your symbol. All right, now you've got a table, and I want you on your table to fill it in uh, next to each one of these. Is it a compound? I want you to draw the stick ball model, which is how we normally represent a bond. And I want you to draw the Lewis dot diagram. Now, you've done these before, so it should be pretty easy. I will do one of them for you, and then you will do the rest. We've got hydrogen. It is not a compound because it's just the hydrogen. If we're gonna draw the stick ball model, that's just a single covalent bond between them. You've seen these before. You saw this on the Lewis dot diagram model paper worksheet. Saw it where you made your Lewis dot. And then to make our Lewis dot, we just show how many electrons they're sharing in between. This right here, this is the Lewis dot diagram for a hydrogen molecule. This is our normal diagram for a hydrogen molecule. This is how we would write it if we just want to write the symbol. Notice we don't include the mass or the number because we're dealing with the standard isotope and the atomic number for hydrogen will always be one. It's not an ion, so we don't have anything there. Fill in the rest for these. Hopefully you remember how your Lewis dot diagrams work. If not, grab out the periodic table, a little bit of extra practice. How fun. Now would be the time uh, when you're done with that to raise your hand, have Patterson check it. That way he knows that you're like doing these notes properly. If you're at home, uh, guess what? You're done for the day. Fill in that table and then uh, we'll pick this up tomorrow after you show this to Patterson. Good, great, grand, wonderful. No yelling on the bus. So the subscript, this is now below the table, subscripts cannot be changed without a chemical reaction. If we're going to make that hydrogen be not attached to that hydrogen anymore, we need to be using a chemical reaction to make that happen. Uh, well, it's not that we need to, it's just that we have to. There's no way that this hydrogen molecule is going to detach itself without some kind of chemical reaction because like we defined earlier, anytime we're rearranging the bonds, we're going to be having a chemical reaction. A lot of times it's also called the chemical change. It's different from looking at their chemical properties. Any chemical change will result in different chemicals. Any chemical reaction will result in different chemicals being formed. We represent it with a chemical formula. In a reaction, listen here, here's your next notes. The reactants always react to form the products. The reactants react, see the arrow means they're reacting to form the products. The reactants shown here, now there's two of them, that's why there's a plus sign. They react together, that's what that arrow means. It means A and B react together to yield molecule AB. Here we've got molecule of A and B, just one molecule. It's reacting to make molecule A and molecule B. Here we got a little AB, it's going to react with C to make molecule AC and B. Again, notice we have rearranged who is bonded with whom. If we have molecule AB, they get together with CD. Here they are reacting. And notice again, now A's with D and the C's with B. They've done switched up their partners. To do that, they have to break that bond right there and they have to make a new bond right there. New bond, how fun. I'm having fun already. In a chemical reaction, the reactants react to form the products, if you didn't already get that one down. The reactants are always over here on the left-hand side. See the left-hand side? And the products are always over here on the right-hand side. Fun. Now you'll notice if you flip the page, you've got all these chemical reactions laid out for you. And at this point, you need to label the products and reactants below. After that, uh, this video is done. You've got a Bill Nye video to watch, and then you can watch the next video.